Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. <laughs> Why I ever let you talk me out of taking a cab, I will never know. I didn't talk you out of taking a cab. I talked you into walking. A very subtle deduction. Oh, no hurry. We've got loads of time. I like what you call loads of time. (laughs) Our appointment with Dr. Rowland is in exactly ten minutes. Why can't women be punctual? Now, don't be so fidgety. We're practically there. Anyway, I can't see why you have to come with me, darling. I intend to have a talk with Dr. Rowland about you. He said I should walk a lot. That was two months ago. Oh, well. I'll make a deal with you. I won't worry about you if you'll promise to stop worrying about me. Who said anything about me worrying about you? Well, then why all the cabs all of a sudden? And taking my arm when we get to a curb? And why won't you ever let me do anything except nothing? Because you are the lady I love. The mother of my child, do you mind? All I mind is that I don't want you to go around worrying about me. You have enough on your mind. No, but when it comes to you, it's different. Oh, thank you. You can worry all you like. If I have a cold, I have to go to bed. If I, if I cut my finger, my arm should be in a sling. If I... But, David, there is nothing the matter with me. I haven't got a cold, and I haven't cut any of my fingers. I'm only having a baby. Don't you understand? I had a slight idea that was what's going on. And everybody has babies all the time, for centuries. Chickens have them, cats have them, chipmucks have them. You don't say. So why shouldn't we have them? You don't seem to understand that I'm not worrying. I I just want you to be careful. Oh, being careful is such a bore. All right, I'll be as careful as I can be. Within limits. I suppose that's the most I can expect. Hmm. You know, being in New York today makes me realize how much I love our farm. I love it, too. But a few days in New York will do you good. Oh, I'm not complaining. Except my city shoes pinch. (laughs) Well, here we are at Dr. Rowling's. In plenty of time. Through no fault of yours. That's something else about poor Julia. She comes to see Dr. Rowland because she isn't having a baby. We come because we are. Oh, David, it's not fair that we should have so much, other people so little. I'll tell Julia that. Now, come on in. It's starting to rain. I hope his waiting room isn't all crowded. I hope not, too. Usually there are at least ten mink coats sitting around. That's a depressing (laughs) statistic. Good morning, Mrs. Norton. Oh, hello, Miss Sterling. You're looking fine, Mrs. Norton. Feeling fine. Sterling, this is my husband. Good morning. Oh, yes, Mr. Norton. Mrs. Norton, Dr. Rowland will be with you in a moment. Just be seated, please, in the waiting room. Thank you. Oh, my mother's meeting is here, too. Of course. I'll show Mrs. Brown in. Thank you. You won't have to wait long. The doctor is seeing his last patient. That's luck, isn't it? That icicle. Ooh. You'd think she'd scare away the stork. <laughs> Shh. She's just efficient. I'm glad I'm not married to an efficient woman. <laughs> Look, we're the only people here. How wonderful. Is this drawing room Dr. Rowland's waiting room? With a swanky doctor, a waiting room isn't supposed to look like a waiting room, though. Uh-huh. Why not? It would depress the swanky patients. What would? <laughs> Hello, Mama. Well, it's about time you got here. Don't listen to her, Mama. We just got here ourselves. Hello. I don't listen to her, David. I learned that a long time before you did. Well. You're looking fine, Mother. Why shouldn't I? I've had a little peace and quiet in New York all by myself. <laughs> Are you two having a good time ignoring me? Oh, you still here. Hello? Yes, I'm still here. David's right, Mommy. You don't look badly at all. David's always right. This is a plot. Sit down, Mother. Yes, make yourself at home. Mama, have you... I bet you've been so busy you haven't missed us at all. How'd you guess? What have you been doing? Mm, lots of things. Such as? 
I don't see that I have to give you a detailed report of how I spend my time. You but don't. You, but if you insist, I, I've been dancing and juggling and oh. walking a tightrope over <laughs> Niagara Falls. Very good. <laughs> That's telling her, Mother. Oh, you too. If I let you out of my sight one week, Mama, you start being independent again. Has she been behaving, David? No. Hmm, doesn't surprise me. She thinks it's smart to go on as if nothing were happening. What is happening? That's for Dr. Rowland to tell you. Oh, that again. It's all you two can think of. You'd think you and Mama were having the baby. Sometimes I wish we were. It'd be so much easier for us. I'll talk to Dr. Rowland about that, too. The doctor is ready to see you now, Mrs. Norton. Oh, thank you. Well, don't go away, you two. And don't talk about me either. You won't. Don't worry. There's a more interesting subject around somewhere, I'm sure. Well, David... How do you think she looks, Mother? Fine. Is she taking it a little easier? Not so you can notice it. You know how she loves to be active. I remember all the rainy Saturday nights when Claudia was a little girl and I went to bed exhausted. Well, right now it's like a series of long, rainy Saturdays for Claudia. It will be for another couple of months. I don't see how. Isn't she awful busy up in the country, getting the house settled without a maid and everything? Well, it's always worse when you have a lot to do and you mustn't do it. Days can be very long. Yeah, particularly when they're lonesome. You know that, Mother. Everybody tastes it sooner or later. I wish my husband could have known you, David. Thanks, Mother. Well, I, I don't know what we're being so serious about, do you? Sitting around a doctor's waiting room always makes me serious. <laughs> Except that we're here for a happy reason. Of course. Actually, I think Claudia's very well. She acts too well. Maybe that's what makes me think she's not as careful as she might be. That child just doesn't seem to realize what having a baby means, does she? Maybe it's better this way. I wonder. Mr. Norton, Dr. Rowan would like to talk to you alone. Oh, fine. David, you don't oh, think well, that... of course not now. We just said she looked fine, didn't we? It's right through the door on the left, Mr. Norton. Uh, thank you very much. Oh, hello, Mr. Norton. Your wife is in the examining room. She she won't be able to hear us. I'm glad to see you, Doctor. I... Good morning to have you. Good. A... Sit right down here by the desk. Thank you. I dare say you're concerned about your wife? Mm, a little. Nothing specific. You're quite right. There's nothing specific to be alarmed about. And yet... Yes? Mr. Norton, your wife is a completely normal young woman, and everything has gone along beautifully up to this point. The fact that you have sensed some slight change in her condition is a credit to your instinct. Your, shall I say... Uh, just call it love, Doctor. So I think you'd better be perfectly frank with me. I was perfectly frank with Mrs. Norton, too, the last time she was here. Hmm? She didn't mention it to me. Rather an amazing young woman. The average wife would be apt to coddle herself. <laughs> Not Claudia. I wish she would. That's exactly the point. What she needs these next two months is a good bit of coddling. I want her to take it very easy, avoid exertion of any kind, and follow the diet I've outlined to her. Yeah, that's... Quite an order. So I gather. I'm going to see her next week, however, and I have every reason to believe there is no cause for immediate worry. Then you... you don't think it necessary for us to uh, come into New York now that we can be nearby in case of an emergency? No reason at this point. As I said, there's nothing urgent. Just... just keep an eye on her and see that she takes it easy. All right, I'll... I'll do my best, Doctor. And don't hesitate to call me if you feel the need. I won't. Is, uh, Claudia ready? Yes, the nurse is weighing her now. She'll be out in a moment. She isn't upset about herself, is she? She doesn't seem to be. She seems to be a very well-adjusted young woman, for which you should be particularly grateful, Mr. Norton. Oh, I am. Still, being as active as she is, these next two months aren't going to be easy for her. Yeah, I appreciate that. That's why I'm glad you dropped in to see me. This is one of the times when an ounce of cooperation is worth a pound of cure. Goodbye, Mr. Norton. Goodbye, Doctor, and thank you very much. Oh, I thought it was Claudia humming. Oh, she'll be out in a minute. Well? Nothing much. I don't like the way you say that. What does it mean? Just what you think it means. Nothing too serious. We'll have to keep a close eye on her. 
How would you like that? Oh, thank you. Then you will come back to Eastbrook with us? Now, what do you think? I hate asking you. You don't have to ask me. Ask you what? I married a couple of eavesdroppers. Well, let's be on our way. I'm hungry. Let's go to lunch right away. All of us. All of us, but me. I'm going back to the office. You are mule-headed. It has to be living with you. Oh, it's a good thing. I hope he's as stubborn as you. You never said a truer thing, Mama. Come on, darling. I'll help you with your coat. Oh, I can do it alone. Be quiet and stand still. I'm not an invalid. You heard your mother. Personally, I don't care whether you stand on your head or not. You but don't. the least you can do is obey your dear, darling mother. Oh, oh dear, darling mother wishes you'd been around for the last 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> we both need moral support. Why uh, don't you come back to Eastbrook with us, mother? Is that an invitation or a cry for help? A cry for help, of course. And I'll think it over. You don't have to do me any favors, Mama. I know it. I come, it's for David. Ooh. Then you will... Oh, where, where are my gloves? Can't find my gloves. There they are, under the chair, clumsy. Here, I'll... Too late. I'll, uh, I'll get them. I'll get them already. Oh, David, don't look like that. I can pick up my own gloves. Well, hurry up now. Mama's gone already. Wait a minute, darling. You're not fooling me. What about? Whatever Dr. Rowland told you to make you look like this. I'm sorry. Mm, look like what? Uh... Don't try to put on now, please. Please trust me, David. I know it won't be easy, having a baby. I didn't know whether you did, so I went on acting like usual, so you wouldn't worry. You little cluck. Now you know, too. I can tell by the look in your eye. Oh, you're too smart. No, it's not a matter of being smart. It's a matter of loving someone enough. I'm not going to be foolhardy about our baby. So promise me not to worry anymore. I'll be careful. You bet you'll be careful. Mama's coming back to East, Eastbrook with us to see that you are. Every cloud has its silver lining. <laughs> well, we'd better hurry. Our silver lining is waiting out in the hall for oh, us. Oh, David, you're the most wonderful, darling person in the whole world. I was a little frightened, but I'm not anymore. What do you ask for when you're ordering Coca-Cola? Some folks call it Coke, others Coca-Cola. For both are trademarks of the Coca-Cola company. Both identify the product that invites you to pause and refresh. But always, it's the self-same delicious refreshment. Every day, Monday through Friday... Well, Mr. King, it looks like I'm getting back on that Eastbrook train. And everybody's delighted. When are you leaving? Friday, I suppose. That'll give me time for packing. You mean if that daughter of yours leaves you any time? Claudia and David are staying at Julia and Hartley, so I'll have a little time. At Julia and Hartley's, eh? Well, that ought to be amusing. Very. And that's what we'll find out about tomorrow, when Claudia and David spend the night in a mansion surrounded by maids and butlers. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir and remember. Whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.